So what are some of the most common symptoms that kind of indicate? Well, the most common, and, and right now on the internet you can hear things like CCI or AI, AAI, which is uh, cervical, uh, cranial cervical instability or okay. atlantal axial instability. Those are right at the very top. Uh, a lot of those produce the same kind of symptoms. Okay. Because you're hitting those vital structures, you're gonna hit the vagus nerve, for example. That's one of the cranial nerves in there that controls your breathing, your heart rate, and so forth. But you're also in that instability, and, and we tend to forget that, and this is what I'm gonna be talking about also in mm -hmm. the seminar, is you've got these little holes running through your uh, cervical spine where the little vertebral arteries run up. Those guys run up, they curve up underneath the skull, and then they go through the little hole that goes to your brain, right? Okay. So right at the base of your skull, you have this network of vascularization that feeds all of the base of your brain. That comes from those vertebral arteries. So if you start to get a shearing occurring in those little holes, you've got two holes and you start to pull them apart, yeah. that center hole is gonna get smaller. And that little artery inside of it's gonna get pinched and pulled. When that happens, you're gonna cut the blood supply down to all of that area. Wow. Now, all of that area no longer can function. You know how you get a numbness and tingling in your arms when you've maybe laid on it wrong or something? Sure. Imagine your brain going through that. So oh. all of a sudden your brain is not getting the blood supply it needs. That's the brain that feeds the balance, a brain that feeds vision, recognition, things like this, uh, balance, uh, parts that fill, uh, that control your heart rate, your breathing. So now you get heart palpitations, you get shortness of breath for no darn apparent reason. And it's simply because you have some sort of instability that compresses and that's just the vascular side. We also have a neurologic side. Those wow. nerves also can get pinched and, and create problems as well. So you got, a double whammy from several different yeah. angles that are going to create symptoms like headaches, uh, vision problems, uh, fatigue, uh, uh, lightheadedness. Um, I'm trying to think of a few other words off the top of my head. There's a whole bunch of lists. I mean, yeah. and, and really what's interesting is the brain, the brain stem is where, where all this is happening. You've got all these tracks that feed the whole body. So sometimes we've even seen some really random stuff. Hey, t today my big toe really hurts bad, but now tomorrow it's my right arm that hurts. You know, you'll start, you see patients that get these really sporadic uh, sort Weird. of symptoms. Yeah. How bizarre, and it's all that same injury. And it's the same area, it's just however that instability is shifting. So if several ligaments are damaged, you're gonna have instability in several different directions of that same joint. So uh, the upper cervicals have a whole bunch of ligaments up there controlling uh -huh. various ranges of motion. So. If you have several of those damaged and overstretched, you're gonna have that shifting all kinds of places and whatever tract happens to get hit, you're gonna have some sort of compromise for it and you get some symptoms from that. 